Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Dani and today I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in August. Before we start, if you haven't watched my M&M's DBR for September yet, I'm going to link that in the cards and it's already uploaded and I'm so excited for all the readathons that I'm participating in September and I'm going to attempt to film a weekly reading vlog so we'll see how that goes. So don't remember to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet to watch all my M&M's DBR and those vlogs in September. Let's get into the books that I read in August. It wasn't a lot. These are all the books that I read in August. I'm still reading Goddess in the Machine, the reddish orange one here, but I should finish it today so I'll talk about my thoughts so far and in the weekly vlogs that I'm going to start today I can talk about more how I thought about it but also I will film an in-depth review of just that one for my Outcrate book and box series, because that was an Outcrate book. Actually, I was wrong because in August 1st, I read two volumes of Full Metal Alchemist, volumes eight and nine. And I already, well, I didn't talk about these volumes specifically because they're the eight and nine in the series, but I already mentioned them in my last wrap up. So that's why it wasn't in the basket. But if you haven't heard about it yet, Full Metal Alchemist is my new all time favorite series. I am reading as these editions are published, so I haven't read the whole series yet. And it's about two brothers who can do alchemy, so they can turn things into other things. And they did some pretty bad stuff in the past, so they have to figure that out. There's also some government political stuff happening at the same time. And it's just filled with amazing characters and just great relationships and a lot of cool fantasy and humor. The first book that I read in August was The Clocks by Agatha Christie. This, of course, is a murder mystery. In this book, Sheila, she's a stenographer, so she types things for people because this is a time when you have to use typewriters. Uh, she's hired by this woman called Miss Pabmarsh to go do some stenographer work for her. When she gets there, there is a dead man and the floor of her living room and Miss Pabmarsh is not there when she comes back she doesn't know anything about it and no one knows who this dead man is and there's a bunch of clocks all set to the same time around the room so it's very mysterious and this is a Poirot novel so Detective Poirot if you don't know him he's a, re a recurrent character in Agatha Christie's novels he shows up here to solve everything and I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars, 4.5, maybe rounding up to five stars, because it was so entertaining throughout the end. There are some backstories here in this book, some civil war spy stuff going on, but most of the book, like 99% of it, is focused on solving the murder, which I really like because you're not going on tangents about other stuff. You're really, everything that, all the information that you're getting is information to solve the murder. And one special thing about this book that I really like, there's, I feel like some of Agatha Christie's books, the killer can be any, anyone. Like in the end, the detective or whoever is solving the mystery will explain in a very cohesive and pretty way how, how the murder was committed. But it, they could explain it to fit any of the characters in the novel. And in this one, that's not the case because there are clues throughout the story that just, it, can, it can only be one person. But I completely miss those clues and those are my, my favorite type of mysteries, of murder mysteries, of thrillers. The ones that the author gave me all the clues and I miss them. So I just, I really love those type of stories because they really make me focus on the wrong thing. So I really enjoyed it and if you haven't read Anything by Agatha Christie, I think this would be a good place to start because it's a very quick read. But also, if you like Agatha Christie and you haven't read this one yet, I do recommend it. The second book that I read in August was A Stranger in the House by Cheryl LaPena. I read this for the read thon I have a vlog for it. I'm going to link that in the cards as well. When I first explained the plot of this book, I was totally wrong. I understood it completely wrong. But the idea here is that this woman is suffers an accident and she suffers an suffers an accident right by where a murder happened so she's officially a suspect but she doesn't remember anything that happened on the night when she was there and she thinks that someone is going through her stuff in her house and just messing with stuff in her house but no one believes her this one unfortunately was a disappointment for me i have given five stars to two of the other books that i read by this author and unfortunately this one was a three stars i think Yes, I gave this book three stars. 
And I think the biggest disappointment for me with this book is that there weren't a lot of revelations after, like after we figured a little bit of it out, the rest of the book is just so slow and nothing happens. And I don't know, there is in the end, there is a little bit of what would be a twist, but for me, it wasn't enough and it really didn't pay off in the end. I wasn't, I was very curious. I was very intrigued throughout the end. It just didn't pay off for me what the twists and revelations were. So for this one, I don't know if I would recommend it unless you're reading all of her work. I would recommend it, but I think there are many better thrillers that you could be reading. So this would not be the one that I would recommend if you don't, if, just if you have nothing, no other thrillers to read, I think. It isn't that bad, it was just very disappointing. Because I knew how much I loved her other works, I still want to read all of the books that she writes. Uh, there's two I think already out that I haven't read yet. I'll definitely read them and we'll see if I'm going to keep reading all of her work. But she already got two five stars for me, so I'll, I will definitely try everything else. And then the next book I read was the audiobook was also for the Readathon. It was Women Talking by Miriam Tals. This is about a group of Mennonite women who get together to discuss if they should leave the community because they are being abused by the men. And unfortunately, this was also a disappointment to me, but this is a very important story. This is a very powerful story. It has a very unique setting with the discussions that they have. They worry about religion at the same time as their freedom. And all that discussion is so interesting. But for some reason, the author decided to have this story be narrated by a man. And I don't, I understand why she did that. The, the reason that she gives in the beginning of the book is that the women want to record everything that's being said and they, they are illiterate so they can't write. So they ask this man who have helped them before to record the sessions, record their, their conversations. But I think that was a really disservice for this, the subject that the story has. It includes a lot of what this man is going through, which are very impactful things as well. But I think it should be separate. It should be another story if she wanted to tell the story of this man, because I wanted to hear the women talking. I wanted to hear their stories. I wanted to hear their perspective and not be interrupted by a man. So I also gave this book three stars. I couldn't get past the fact that the, the man was telling the women's story and that annoyed me a little bit. But the audiobook is actually really good. The narrator of the audiobook is really good. The narrator of the book, not so much. This one I would still recommend it if you're interested in this subject, in this story, but just go into it knowing that you're going to be interrupted by a man. A lot, of time, a lot of the time. And then I read Where Dreams Ascend by Janela Angelis. I already have a full in-depth review of this book. I'm going to link that in the cards because this was also an awkward book. And this has a story of Kalia. She's a very powerful magician and she grew up in this club performing for these people. She doesn't know much about her past, but she wants to go to this big city to, to participate in a magic competition. And unfortunately, I also gave this one three stars. It was more of a 3.5, but I rounded it to three on Goodreads. I had a little bit of the same issue that I had with Cryer's War in this book, because I think it's a very cool universe that she created. I really enjoy the atmosphere of this book, but we just didn't get enough answers here. I feel like we need the sequel to properly enjoy this book. Like I said, I have the review, so I'm not gonna go too much in depth. And this one but this has an amazing main character she is really the strong point of the book but the other characters the plot i don't know that was all lacking a little bit for me but if you're interested in the story do check the other video because i give more details of what you might enjoy or you might not enjoy here and then the last book that i read in August that I finished so far because I'm going to finish God is in the Machine but the last one that I already finished was The Well of Ascension by Brenda Sanderson. This is the second book in the Mistborn series so I can't talk too much about what happens here without spoiling the first one completely but the first one tells the story of Vin and Kelsier trying to overthrow the Lord Ruler who's been ruling this place for a thousand years and they want to free the Ska who are the slaves and this place. So that's the first book. 
This one picks up uh, one or two years after the first one, following the aftermath of what happened in the first book. Without any spoilers of this one or the first one, I will say that this book, I was ready to give this four stars. In the end, it was a five star, but I was ready to give it four stars because the first chunk of it is... There's not a lot that happens. It's still... A, for me, it was a very fast read and I was entertained throughout the whole book, but there's not a lot that happens. There's a lot of back and forth on the situation that is going on that you always go back to where we were in the beginning of the book. But then we get to the final 200 pages and they make up for everything else in this book. I had so many theories in my head, some completely crazy, but some that could actually be what would happen and none of them were through. This book broke my heart like as in a way that it hadn't been broken by a book in a long time and it was there was also some very heartwarming and happy things that happened here. So a lot of emotions in those last pages that I totally deserve five stars. So still Miss Bourne is one of my favorite series. I am definitely going to read the last one in the series soon this year hopefully i wasn't able to fit in my tbr for september i might just rush through everything else these are the books that i read don't don't look at it as a spoiler if you haven't watched the september tbr video or just ignore everything else and read it i'm kidding maybe and then i am still reading goddess in the machine by laura bath johnson this is the other alcrave book so like i said there will be an in-depth reveal about it when i finish and i'm also going to talk a little bit on the vlog that i'm going to film this week i am almost done with it. I'm on page 280. This is reading pretty fast. Uh, this is a story about a girl who is put on cryogenic sleep to travel to another planet and she's supposed to get there after a hundred years but something goes wrong that a thousand years passes and she ends up in a place that she doesn't understand anything and everyone there calls her a goddess and treats her as a goddess because their technology is magic and people who can do technology and who woke up in a, what they called it a grave but the capsule that she was sleeping those people are goddesses but i really enjoyed the premise i really enjoyed the first chapter of it my issue with this book this is probably gonna be like three stars i'm predicting but the, my problem with it is that the author invented a whole new language that the people where she is speaks. And we go, we have two point of views in the story. We have Andra, who is the main character, and we have Zaid. I don't know how, exactly how to say his name. But his point of view is all written in this made up language, which is, of course, very similar to English, but they change a lot of the words. And you can still understand pretty much everything, but it's it's exhausting, honestly, for me to... like I have to pay attention to every word that I'm reading to kind of like translating my head what they're saying. And I don't know, I think it's not very, a not very accessible book. I would never recommend it to someone who is just learning English, for example. I don't know, it just feels very exhausting. This feels like I getting outside of the book all the time like it's not immersive at all because I have to keep paying attention to the words that are on the page and what they mean and then I'm like okay this so this is what he said of course that happens very fast in my head but still is a process that I don't like to have to do when I'm reading a book but that's what's going on that's a little bit of how a spoiler of the next video that I'm going to film for the for when I filmed the I'll create book unbox. Those are all the books that I read in August. We had two five stars, four three stars. Not a great ratio there, but we'll see if September is better. I'm very excited for the books that I'm reading in September. So again, if you haven't checked that video, do check it out. And let me know if you read any of these and what you thought about them. And remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.